and covering up the little creek to make room for a housing project. There goes his rest, there goes his cabin, there goes his seclusion and his privacy. So he sighs and he says, well, this isn't the only place in the world. I'll go on and find another place, which he does. He goes a couple hundred miles way on back. He finds another quiet place. Stays there for a couple days. Looks out the window again, groans again. Here come the truck and the bulldozers again to make a new super highway through the area there. He's distressed and dismayed, so he packs up his little few belongings, takes off again. Third time, fourth time, fifth time, he tries to find a place to rest. In this aggressive, in this hostile, in this noisy world, you can't find any rest or security at all, and he knows it. You know what he does? To conclude the story, he goes to another country altogether. This country where he lived, every, everyone is mad, always pushing things around, always making other people uncomfortable. There's no place. He understood there's no place to hide, so he went to another place where there was a place to be secluded, to not be part of the, the madness of the crowds and their aggression. Well, I've just uh, related your life story, haven't I? You, you haven't found a place to hide, have you? You know what? I know it. You're nervous. You're insecure. You're looking out the window, aren't you? Wondering when, wondering when your rest is going to be disturbed. What rest? When that this, this little corner that you found, you're you're wondering when the bulldozers are going to come up and the men with the with the hats and the and the surveying instruments when they're going to push you out of there. You're just waiting for it and worrying over it, aren't you? And so you go from this marriage to the next marriage. You go from this career to that career. You go from this daydream to the next one and on to the next one, and on to the next one. You're pretty tired of running, aren't you? Please understand something. As long as you stay in this nation, the society of this world, you'll always be running. There's, there's, no, there's no place to run to. And do you understand that this world that I'm talking about, this world of the mad bulldozers, you understand we're, we're telling you that it is inside you as well as outside? That's where you can start to make a change of scenery, a permanent change of scenery. You find something inside yourself, begin to, begin to understand there's a new country inside yourself. It will come to you. Here's the beauty of it. Come on. You know you're at the mercy of this world, aren't you? You're afraid of everyone and everything. I better repeat that. You fear, you're terrified of, and hostile, hostile toward everything and everyone. Of course you are. Oh, I know you smile a lot, and I know you've got a lot of exciting things to do. But oh, are you worried? Worried over yourself. Well, we've talked a good deal about the problem. We could go on and on about it because it's there. And you could add your own particular details to it, couldn't you? You could fill in a lot of the blank spaces. You could say, yes, that's what I do, and I run away. And you could say, for example, I, I ran away one time when this or that happened. And along came the bulldozers again, and all the yelling and all the noise, and you had to run again. It's, uh, it's unnecessary. Look, look, it's so simple. I said to you, two, three seconds ago, I said it's unnecessary for you to keep running. It's unnecessary for you to, to delude yourself into thinking that at last you found a place to hide. You haven't and you won't the way you're living. 
protecting yourself, battling, fighting, getting tough all the time. You're not going to find it. I'm telling you, you're not going to find it the way you're going. No, never. Face it right now. It can be found. It can be found, but not as long as you want to find your kind of security. Your kind of security is as follows. You always say to yourself, the next cabin will be the permanent one. I know it will be. If I just get the money, I just get the man, just get the woman, I just get that new home somewhere, I know that will be it. If I get the education, if I get this or that, you're always saying, if I get this or that, that will be it. The next time you kid yourself, into thinking that the next cabin is going to be a permanent one, I, I want you to do something for yourself. I want you to notice the doubts you have even while you say it. I want you to notice how self-deception has become so hardened in you that you can no longer observe it. Now, if you did this, if you could see yourself deceiving yourself into thinking that in one way or another or some future heaven or whatever you've invented, this future heaven or cabin or whatever it is, notice that when you say, this next one is going to be my place of rest, notice that there's no way you can believe yourself. That is good. That's not bad. That's good. It is good to see how you lie. And lies have been the story of your life. And if you're angry at me saying that, that proves it. Wouldn't it be better to say something like this? Yes. I've kidded myself into thinking that when I get this or get rid of that, then I'll be happy. But I've never been happy, therefore, I'm doing the wrong thing. Therefore, I'd better listen to something higher than myself, a voice that's higher than me, listen to that and let it come to me, and let it tell me its whole story so that, so that I can have a whole life at last and it will happen.